brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. All righty, everyone. Welcome in to the SCPI CIF Southern Section LaxCast. I'm Sarah Chafee, joined as always by Jim Loftus. He's our analyst. He's the brains behind the duo. And uh, Jim, we have a lot to talk about. This isn't going to be a tough one. It was a pretty busy week. There's uh, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on early on in the season. Absolutely. So we'll start as we usually do with our top ten rankings, and uh, we'll kind of go through that and uh, explain it to you guys. So we'll start with our SCPI CIF Southern Section boys top ten rankings, and uh, there's some movement. So we're going to work through this with you guys. But we'll start with number ten. You can see we have Westlake nine Tesoro. Eight, Palos Verdes. Seven, Oaks Christian. Six, Chaminade. Five, Harvard Westlake. Four, Corona Del Mar. Three, St. Margaret's. And then two, Loyola. And holding it down at the number one spot is Foothill. So first things first, Jim, I want to talk about, we had two teams drop out. So Santa Margarita and San Clemente. So for those wondering, give some reasoning behind why those two teams didn't make our top 10 ranking this week. Well, the biggest reason San Clemente dropped out is they haven't played. The, the, they have, they have, they're 1-0. The win was against Thousand Oaks from up here in this area. Uh, opening game of the season for both teams. It was, I believe, 10-8 to uh, San Clemente. Um, and Thousand Oaks has now gone 0 and 5 um, against a, a really tough schedule. Give them credit for for scheduling really tough, but it makes you wonder how how heavy to value that San Clemente victory. And there's only one game, so that was uh, the 24th, I believe, of February, and and they haven't played since. So we'll see. You know, they they're always a good program, uh, and if they when they start playing again and start winning, then then they can move back in. Santa Margarita dropped out because the, they lost um, pretty handily to Tesoro, um, which enters our rankings at number nine, um, and and so that that dropped Santa Margarita out. But they'll have a chance to get right back in it. So there's definitely some hope for them. Um, also, let's talk about a little bit of the movement, Jim, in our boys' top ten. What are a couple snippets that stick out to you this week? Um, well, St. Margaret's moves up from six to three. Um, they had a really good week. They beat Cathedral Catholic of San Diego, and then they came up to the L.A. area and won at Harvard Westlake. Uh, Harvard Westlake was three and zero, and number three in the L.A. area, and and St. Margaret's beat them. Uh, pretty easily. Um, now they uh, play at Loyola, another trip up here um, on Saturday. So, so we'll see if, they, if they're going to stick around in that top three, top five area or, uh, or, or maybe climb higher, maybe, maybe drop a little lower. We'll see. Um, and then there's some other movers. Um, you know, Chaminade is 4-0, uh, beat Oaks Christian on the road Friday night. Uh, Oaks was number four in the LA area and it was coming off a win over Palos Verdes. So that moved Chaminade up a little bit. Um, and so Oaks, is, you see Oaks there uh, it's holding at number seven. Palos Verdes drops because of that loss both to Oaks Christian and then in overtime at Loyola in the rain uh, on Saturday night. <laughs> Which you were at, correct? I, I was there. I was, I was getting wet. Um, <laughs> and then we have their two new entrants, um, Tesoro, coming off that win over Santa Mar Margarita. And Westlake from up here, which is 4-0. Uh, and is averaging around 18 goals a game. My goodness. Um, I have not yet seen them. I hope to get a look at them this week, uh, maybe next. i got to look at their schedule. Um, but uh, but they, they could be hard to slow down. Another team that's averaging a, a large sum of goals per game would be our number one team, Jim. That's Foothill. They're 5-0. and They're averaging 14 goals per game, and uh, they've scored at least 12 in every game so far. What's it going to take to top Foothill, or, or do you see and do you foresee that even happening? <laughs> oh, I think there's definitely teams, some teams that can beat them. As we talked about last week, Loyola took them to overtime and was actually leading in that game, and, and it was Foothill that mounted the comeback and, and forced OT. Um, Foothill doesn't play an easy schedule, so so they're going to come up against some matchups that will challenge them, um, and it could very well be a team like St. Margaret's. I know Foothill, I'm pretty sure, plays Palos Verdes uh, in the future. 
um, Corona Del Mar. Um, so there will be opportunities for someone to try to knock them off the, the top of the hill. We'll be keeping our eye out for that as well. So now let's kind of move, shift gears and move to the girls. Uh, CPI Southern Sec CIF Southern Section Top 10. And uh, let's start with number 10, Jim. We have Newport Harbor, 9 Tribuco Hills, 8 Chaminade, 7 Los Al, Los Alamitos, and uh, 6 Aliso Niguel, 5 Santa Margarita, 4 Redondo Union, 3 uh, St. Margaret's, 2 is Foothill, and still holding it down at the number one spot, we have Modern Day. So same type of thing. Let's talk about uh, we had we had two teams uh, similarly drop out. We have San Clemente and Corona Del Mar. Uh, CDM they lost twice, so I mean that's that's kind of explains why they fell out. Talk to us about why San Clemente's out. San Clemente's out um, mostly. I mean they 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 also lost twice at Aliso Miguel. It was overtime, uh, and at San Juan Hills. But mostly they drop out because a couple people, a couple other teams needed to jump in, uh, d deserved mention, and there's only 10 slots. So somebody had to get bumped. Um, we This week we added Elisa Niguel, which beat San Clemente. Elisa Niguel is 3-1, and one, um, and they, they also beat Palos Verdes, uh, girls from, from up in this area. And in the latest coaches poll that just went out, uh, Palos Verdes girls, I believe, jumped up to number four. Uh, in, in the LA area. So, so, you know, Aliso, um, is, is deserving. So, mm -hmm. so we popped them in there, uh, at number six, Los Al also was not in the rankings last week. Uh, they won at Corona Del Mar. We saw CDM drop out. Uh, and then, uh, they've also beaten Tribuco Hills, which we have in our top 10 at number nine. Now they were five. Mm -hmm. So, so you're looking at Los Alamitos at two and two with a couple of decent victories. Um, but the other thing about these rankings is it's still very early mm -hmm. and it's hard, it's hard to know how good different teams are until we get a greater sample size of, uh, of games and, and comparative um, strength of schedule and the like. So this is kind of what it looks like now, um, but we'll see another week, another two weeks, and, and there could be some changes. Absolutely. And uh, let's move let's move forward now to game balls. So we we didn't have game balls last week, but but now we have uh, some games to go off of, and we have a few game ball recipients that we that are so deserving of game balls. So let's uh let's give the people our game ball recipients our first ever Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the first one that jumped out at me was the uh, St. Margaret's goalie on the boys' side, Zane Handy. Um, Zane had 12 saves. Uh, St. Margaret's beat uh, Cathedral Catholic um, 11 to 8, so allowed eight goals, saved 12 of them. And then he had 12 more in that win at Harvard Westlake, only allowing five. That's a pretty, pretty decent save percentage against two very good programs. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll shout out to Zane Handy there. A couple of other goalies, Will Parducci of Loyola, um, I mentioned that game in the rain that went to overtime, 8 to 7 for Loyola. Uh, I think he had 11 saves in that game, only allowed seven goals. So, you know, so he had an outstanding performance um, and it deserves mention. I don't have a number of saves, but Kyle McCann of Palos Verdes was uh, was solid in that game as well. Um, and then the last one on the boys side, uh, that I think deserves a mention is Jonathan Gibson. Um, he scored four of his five goals in the first half uh, for Tesoro uh, in their win over Santa Margarita. Uh, that, as we talked about earlier, sort of shook up the the boys' rankings a little bit. So, uh, so those are the those are the the couple that stood out for me on the boys' side this week. All right, congratulations to those guys. Let's move over to the ladies' side, giving out some game balls as well, Jim. Uh, on my list here, um, Los Alamitos Junior Riley Deutsch, I believe is how you would pronounce that, D-E-U-T-S-C-H, uh, scored four goals in the second half in their uh, win over Corona Del Mar, Oliver scoring in the second half uh, in that 11-4 victory. Um, and then uh, Newport Harbor senior captain Adina Rothbard, again, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, Adina, congratulations, yes. uh, scored four goals, including the overtime game winner uh, against San Juan Hills. Wow. What a feeling. Okay, so we spent some time looking back at last week. Now let's look ahead to this week, Jim, and uh, let's give 
some uh, let's give the people at home some good matchups that they can be on the lookout for and some potential matchups that just may change our boys and girls top 10 rankings. Yeah, there are. There's some definitely some good uh, uh, head-to-head top ten matchups on both, uh, especially on the boys' side, but also on the girls' side. Um, and honestly, any night of the week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you can find a uh, uh, a solid matchup um, if you're interested in getting out to a game. Uh, Tuesday, we talked earlier about Santa Margarita at Corona del Mar. Um, Santa Margarita is coming off that loss to Tesoro. And then the other one uh, is up here in the L.A. area, Palos Verdes and Harvard-Westlake. Uh, they are now, well, they were two and three, and now they're three and two uh, in our in our poll, uh, in the L.A. coaches poll. So Palos Verdes slipped to three with uh, coming off two losses. Harvard-Westlake uh, actually moved up from three to two, even though it lost to St. Margaret's. But that's a solid matchup up here, three versus two uh, on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have the opening of the Marmani League. Um, which is one of the tougher leagues up here. Five of their six teams are in the top 12 of the LA coaches poll. And Thousand Oaks plays at Oaks Christian. Mentioned earlier, TO is 0-5, playing a super tough schedule. Uh, Credit to them for the schedule, but they haven't broken through to the win column yet. And they're playing at Oaks Christian, which took a pretty pretty good pounding against Chaminade on Friday night, 10 to 5, and and honestly wasn't really in the game after the second quarter. Um, uh, so that opens Marmani Wednesday. Thursday's an interesting one down in Orange County. Foothill plays host to Loomis Chaffee. Uh, I, love, I love that team. <laughs> <laughs> Chaffee, no. Jokes, yeah, it's, bad it's, jokes. <laughs> well, you know, you, you got to find reasons to root for someone. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. Um, and and so I, we're actually going to live stream the video of that on Maxlax as a as a bit of a, an experiment. But Loomis Chaffee is a prep school from the East Coast that's out here uh, uh, where the weather's a little nicer mm-hmm. and lacrosse is a little uh, uh, a little easier to play in in our weather than theirs right now. That's right. Thursday. So sorry, Jim. I don't want to interrupt, but if people do want to check out that live stream on Maxlax OC, how can they do so? Well, it'll be up on the site. Um, it'll also be up on our YouTube channel, um, and just keep, keep tabs on our uh, on our Twitter feeds um, on Thursday afternoon, evening, and uh, and we'll be sending around the link to that. It's so funny too. Thursday, I think it's supposed to rain in Orange County, so uh, Loomis Chaffee doesn't really. They don't get that California sunshine they might be hoping for. <laughs> Yeah, so we will see, and, and we'll see how uh, how the live stream uh, holds up if, uh, if the weather turns <laughs> foul. <laughs> um, Friday night, uh, we have another Santa Margarita. They come up to play Palos Verdes. So, so both those teams, Santa Margarita and PV, have uh, two good games, uh, important games for them, you know, ha- both having slipped a little bit in the, in the rankings uh, coming off last week. Um, and then uh, Saturday uh, is a really good one, Corona Del Mar at Foothill. Um, so you talked, you asked earlier about what might it take for Foothill to to come off the top of that that top ten list. Mm-hmm. This could be it. You know, wow. we'll see. Um, it's a really good uh, early season matchup between Orange County Powers. Um, and then we also mentioned earlier St. Margaret's uh, comes up here to play Loyola. So. Um, two uh, Saturday afternoon has two really good uh, top five uh, matchups uh, in uh, in our SCPI poll. Definitely could uh, shake up the rankings. We'll keep Definitely. our eye on that. And then uh, J- Jim, let's just quickly go through some girls matchups uh, that people need to keep their eye on as well. Sure. Um, there's a there's a couple Tuesday down in Orange County. Uh, Los Al, which moved into our rankings this year, is at Modern Day, so that'll be a, a tough test for them playing the defending champs. Uh, and then Tribuco Hills is at Santa Margarita. Uh, up here in the LA area, Oak Park uh, is at Redondo Union. Redondo was actually unanimous number one in the LA coaches poll that went out today, but Oak Park is still there in the top five. Uh, uh, I think they were they were either four or five. Um, looking that up now, real quick. Uh, yeah, they're at four. They've, they're two and zero. Oh. Um, they were for four. Year, they had a really good four year run. Uh, made it to the Southern Section title game um, a couple years ago. Made it to the LA title game a couple times in a row. 
had a little bit of an off year last year, mm-hmm. but they're they're trying to get back to that level. Um, so that's a big matchup for them Tuesday mm-hmm. at Redondo Union. Um, Wednesday is is an, another interesting one up in this area, Westlake, uh, which is made a big move in our rankings in our coaches' bowl, jump from 14 all the way to five. Wow. Um, they're three and zero, oh, and they play at Palos Verdes, which uh, is number three um, in the LA coaches' poll. Thursday, a really good one, uh, crossing the the county lines with Redondo Union heading down south to play Foothill. Um, Los Alamitos comes up to play Oak Park. Uh, girls, uh, and then an Orange County matchup, Tribuco Hills and St. Margaret. So those are all Thursday. So Tuesday and Thursday are pretty full as right. far as good matchups on the girls' side. San, San Clemente girls are at Tesoro on Friday, and then Modern Day, our, our number one team, um, faces a challenge on Saturday with Tory Pines from San Diego mm-hmm. uh, coming up north um, for that matchup. So there's good games on, on both boys and girls every night or day of the week. Um, Tuesday through Saturday. So really there's no excuse to not get out and watch a good lacrosse game this week. Uh, it's a it's a full schedule. We'll have a lot to talk about next week, Jim. But uh, gosh, you've just been a wealth of knowledge this week. And um, I just want to kind of go over one more time, you know, how can people live stream this game that you guys are doing? Um, it, one more time for, for everyone. Sure. Well, the... Our website is maxlaxoc.com. Uh, so that's the first place to look. Um, you also follow us on Twitter, uh, MaxLaxLA for the teams up north, and Maxlax Inc., M A X L A X I N C for the Orange County uh, Twitter account. That will certainly be uh, distributing links to the live stream. Um, generally we host that on, through a YouTube channel. Um, uh, so you can, you can find us on the, the Max Lax YouTube channel as well. Um, we try to be, we try to be everywhere, uh, easy to find, um, you know, Google is your friend. <laughs> hey, I agree with that. Well, thank you guys so much for once again, tuning in to the SCPI CIF Southern section, LaxCast. We'll definitely see you next week because we have even more to talk about, Jim. But thank you again for joining. Uh, This is our lead analyst, Jim Loftus. And one more time, how can the people find you on social media and how can they follow everything else lacrosse? MaxLaxOC.com is is the home, and from there you can find all of our social feeds uh, and, uh, you know, drill in to find the, uh, the team of your choice. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week with uh, plenty to talk about.